Hi, I'm Rhonda Buss, and I'm here to walk you through the finishing phase of the Colette Clover Pant Pattern. There are lots of ways to finish things. We don't really have to finish them at all. There's one, that's one train of thought that who's going to see the inside anyway other than me. But I know for myself that there's nothing nicer than pulling on a garment that's beautifully finished on the inside. It makes you just feel really good about what you've made. Now, with finishing this garment, there are, of course, you can serge your seams. Makes for a very nice finished edge. For the facing, you can, you can either press the facing down and finish the edge with a seam binding. This is just a purchase seam binding that you can get at your local fabric store. And what I did in order to save myself a little bit of time, I actually stitched this down. You can't see it from the front side because I stitched right in this little ditch here. So that made it a very quick application. Now the only problem here is when you get to the pocket, in order to stitch that facing down, you're going to have to hold your pocket back because you don't want to end up catching the edge of your pocket as you stitch down that facing. But it's really not that big a deal. It's a very easy thing to do. And then bind, bind the edge. And like I said, you can just buy a, a purchase seam binding from your local fabric store. And you can see here with the pocket, they, I have not finished them yet. It's very easy to come back in and finish the edge of these with the seam binding. But you can see, you know, they're fraying. It doesn't look so nice. It's not the biggest thing in the world, but it, it, once they're finished, it just looks so much nicer on the inside. With the facing, you can also, what I did here, and remember with this pair of pants, I did not put the pockets on the front of these pants. So what I did is I just turned my facing under and if I pull it back enough, you can see that it's just hand stitched down. Before I did that though, what I, I did with the top of my facing is I pressed it and then you can maybe see, I hope you can, that there's just a fine little stitching line here. I love to do edge stitching. I think that it gives a garment just a nice little extra touch. So once I stitched that down, now I could have folded the seam or the facing back and I could have stitched this all down at one time but just me being a little bit persnickety I I didn't want my stitching on the inside to be a little crooked so I preferred just to stitch it down by hand. It's always nice to add a little hook and eye to the top of your pants. With your zipper more than likely it's going to stay shut but in the off chance it doesn't and you don't want a wardrobe malfunction, add a little hook and eye. You can see here I've done the little embroidery stitch around this. Instructions for these are very easy to find. It's just something that I like to do. Rather than adding the eye, what I like to do is add thread chain. It just makes for a nice little flatter finish and holds together really quite well. And like I said, you can find those instructions and we should have a link to those on our blog as well to where you can find instructions on doing the little decorative stitch and doing the thread chain. Now, when I talked about this, I said that you could buy the seam binding at your local fabric store, but sometimes you can't find one that really matches your fabric. And I'll show you here. I also did a seam binding on the hem of my pant because it just made for a very pretty little finish. And I decided I would prefer for this to match my fabric. So that's very easy to do, and it's actually something that I absolutely love doing. I love making seam binding. You can do contrasting seam binding, all kinds of things. So in order to make seam binding, you can, there is a machine that you can get that presses it and you put it through and it presses it all at the same time. But I like to use a bias tape maker. These come in an assortment of sizes so you can, you can actually have an entire collection. This one makes a half inch seam binding 
This one I've already pressed, so you can see how nice it looks. The bias tape, or whenever you cut this, it needs to be cut on the bias. And I, I'm going to show you one of the nice things about this is if you take your iron and you turn this, It actually has a curve to it. Now the nice thing about bias is it's very forgiving. So if, remember we have our pockets and there are two curved edges there. So if you want, you could curve a little bit of it. It just makes it nice. Make, gives it makes it a little bit easier for sewing the binding to the edge of the pocket. But if you get a little bit too carried away and you've got this into too much of a curve, all you need to do is put your iron here and you can straighten it all back out again. So in order to do this, like I said, you need to cut the strips on the bias. And with this fabric, you can see this is the straight of grain of my fabric. And here is where I cut my bias strips. So and my pressing board gives you a good idea of what the bias is. So it's going, this is actually the stretchiest direction of the fabric. And that's what gives you all the opportunities to be able to mold this so well. So always make sure you cut it on the, on the bias grain line of the fabric. So in order to get it to look like this with the nice little folded edges, all you need to do. Now, one thing I'll show you here too is sometimes your fabric is just not long enough and you have a very long edge that you want to apply the bias tape to. So all you do is just sew it together and your seam lines will, or your, yes, your seam lines will be at an angle like this. So don't think that they should be straight. They should be at an angle so that the fabric will lay straight. So take your little bias tape maker and put the strip through here. I've cut this strip one inch wide. Pull it through and you can see because of the little lips on either side of this, it already starts doing the work for you. So it's really a very nice thing. The only thing that I'll warn you about if you've never done this before is if you have your iron on a full steam, you can scorch your fingers as well. But just be careful. And that's it. Very easy to do. So now you can always coordinate your bias tape to whatever garment that you have. Now in order to sew the bias tape onto your garment, you'll see once it's been pressed, you have a nice little, little ditch here. And of course, I have a contrasting fabric here just so it makes it a little bit easier for you to see. So we'll take it over to our machine and we're going to stitch right in that little ditch, line up the two edges, the edge of our fabric and the edge of the bias tape that we've made. And then we're going to stitch right in that ditch. And I'll just sew a little bit just to show you. So bring it back over to our pressing pad. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to get rid of that fold that's on the other side and you'll see why in just a moment. And we're going to press this out. Now take this and fold it over. And this is exactly how I did the edge of my facing as well as the edge of my pant leg. So we'll put that over and you can see on this side 
it actually overlaps that seam. So now take it back to our machine. Line the needle up exactly where that fold line is right there. Put your needle in. And stitch right in that little ditch. So now that's stitched down. The back side is unfinished, but we don't care about that because when this is hemmed up, that's what we're going to see. We'll see this pretty little finished edge. And when we slide our leg into that pant, we'll feel very good about the little extra effort that we went to to finish the seams in such a beautiful way. Thank you for joining me in the sew along for the Colette Clover pant pattern. I hope you enjoy your new pants.